All right, this week on Ask Dr. Lori, an interesting topic. It has to do with uh, finding the best diet for you. There's so many diets out there, Dr. Lori. Someone says, hey, try the paleo diet, try the high carb, low carb, high protein, low protein. What I love about what you have to, I know, keep on going, right? Keep going. There are tests out there to find what diet best fits who you are because one diet doesn't fit all, right? Exactly. And I think that's the most frustrating thing for me and my clients alike uh, is what is the perfect human diet? And we keep hearing that perfect human diet thing, but there is no such thing as a perfect human diet. And actually I wrote about it in my book that's going to be out later this year, but the perfect human diet is a diet that works for you, that gets you to up your optimal weight and where you want to be and optimal um, wellness of where you need to be. So that's the perfect human diet. But there is 6,000 nutrition books out there. There's 6,000 diet books out there. It is so confusing for the regular consumer to try to figure out which one is the best for them, especially when every single book says, my diet is the perfect human diet. And it's completely false, completely false. It's misleading. And we can't have the consumers trying to figure out, I mean, how many more books are you going to try? How many more diets are you going to try? And fail, and then fail, and then fail. So, Yeah. So we need to turn to science, and there are tests that can determine that, and there's a multiple types of tests, right? There are some really cool tests, and this is something that's very cutting edge, and it's something I started learning about last year, and there's a new topic that's been kind of a buzzword out there, and it's called nutrigenomics. And so nutrigenomics actually takes a look at modifiable nutri nutritional factors that can affect your DNA, but actually taking a look at genetic markers that are going to tell you your human story that's inside you personally so that we can personalize your nutrition and your exercise program based off of your genetics, your genetic alleles that we're going to take a look at specifics of those. And then we tailor a program based on your body. Now, DNA testing, what forms do you need to make this DNA test? Is it you're talking about blood, saliva, hair? That's what, yeah, that's what makes this so cool. Um, it's just a saliva test. And so basically you just take a swab and you swab in your cheek um, on both sides. And we send the swab in to a lab in Florida and it gets analyzed and in 10 to 14 days, which is actually a lot less time than, I don't know if you've heard of the, there's a genetic test out there, um, 23andMe. It's one that looks for tons of different genetic markers. Now, the problem with 23andMe is that you it takes several weeks before you get your results back. And then you just get this list of a whole bunch of genetic markers telling you this is your story. Mm. But then you have to hire somebody to interpret it because nobody knows how to interpret it. <laughs> <laughs> so the test that I run basically looks at 42 markers, but it interprets it for you as well. Plus, you get me. So I interpret it for my clients as well and tell them, this is what we need to take a look at. And this is how we need to modify and tweak your program for you. Who's the, the best client for this? Is there a certain age range in which you should have this test done? Or once you get past your 20s, then it gets important to do this? Um, you can start in your 20s if you want. I think everybody's struggling trying to find the perfect the perfect plan for themselves, especially a lot of us that have failed. So say you're 40, like my clientele is a lot of women. And so, and they're usually menopausal. So they've got all these different issues, hormones involved and things like that. And so it just becomes very frustrating because they've tried everything and they still have the belly pooch and I can't figure out what I'm supposed to do. And I've been on Atkins, you know, that's the one I keep hearing from everybody. I've been on Atkins. I'm low carving. I'm doing this. My thyroid is shot. Okay. Well, let's back way back up. And let's take a look at, you know, what should we base your nutrition program off of? So it can be men, it can be women, it can be people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. I've got a couple clients that are in their 60s that I'm running the test on this week. You know, there really isn't a special targeted group. It's just anybody who wants to know their story. And you only have to do it once. That's the perfect thing about this. It's not going to change. Your genetics are not going to change. And so this is a one and done. But then you know. And so there's a printout that they see and that they're not necessarily going to be understand it, but you can understand it because of your background and your education. So what they get when I, when I run the program is they get a 40-page report. Mm -hmm. And the 40-page report extensively goes over all the information. Now, when I show this to a client, they're overwhelmed. They're like, this, this is way above my head. So what I do is I take this much information and I condense it into about that much information and basically give them the snippet and say, this is... Like, 
take in terms of leptin. Leptin is um, one of the hormones that affects um, your hunger and satiety. So basically, it's that communication between your gut and your brain telling you that you're full. I always say, you're full, silly, so stop eating. <laughs> so when we have that gut-brain connection and it's not working, that's usually leptin. Well, this text, test will actually tell you if you have an issue with leptin. So that's going to tell you, okay, well, if I have a leptin issue, then, you know, hormonally, there's something that I need to adjust based off of that. You know, it'll also tell you if you're a sugar craver. There's one specific genetic uh, SNP, it's called GLUT, G-L-U-T, um, that it'll tell you if you're a sugar craver. So basically, it puts it all into perspective of why do I crave sugar more than that guy that's craving salt? Well, it's because I'm genetically predisposed to crave sugar. So there's some really cool genetic markers, but Dave, my favorite part of this is um, when you take a look at your macros. Now, you're Ironman triathlete. I'm sure you know your macros, right? You Do you follow your macros? I and you don't. Know, oh, I don't. I, oh, boy. Okay, I need to do you. Yeah. We, we have to take a look at when you look in terms of macros. So I did a bikini competition last year, and in terms of macros, I had to closely follow fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. And I would put this into my fitness pal, which is a free app on your phone. And I have all of my clients use my fitness pal. And it, it's good to plug that because it's free. Mm -hmm. So basically when you get the genetic test, you'll know exactly what your macros are supposed to be based on your DNA type. So I know that looking at mine, I had my, my diet was completely wrong, totally wrong for me. I was following Atkins because during the bikini competition, we had to restrict carbs. So we went really low carbing and I was eating tons of protein and tons of fat. Well, you've also heard that fat doesn't make you fat. Have you heard that? Yes. It's all over. It's all over the news. Fat doesn't make you fat. And there's good fats and good fats are good for you. However, if you have the genetic predisposition to get fat from fats, you're going to find that out in this test. And this test is going to tell you if you're one of those people who, unfortunately, even if you eat tons of good fats, it's going to make you fat. So I'm one of those people. I found out that I had to increase my carbs. And so I had actually increased my carbs up to about 40% of my daily intake. And then the other 60% was coming from, from uh, proteins and fat sources and actually lower fat. It's telling me I'm more predisposed to having an issue of storing fat when I eat fat. So I find that completely fascinating. I've got one client that it said that she needed to do 55% carbs. And she looked at me and she's like, you know, we're all afraid. We're carbophobes. And she's like, I can't do 55% carbs. But it doesn't mean you're going to go out and start eating French fries. It doesn't mean you're going to start eating two cups of rice. You know, it means that we're going to start at introducing more fruits, you know, more fibrous vegetables and things like that. Those are good carb sources. So, you know, I kind of help clients get through the jumble and the mess yeah. Because there's so much information and people, I think, are just on overload. You get on the internet and they're, they're just confused. There's too much out there. What I love about this, Dr. Lori, is that it's personalized. This is for okay. me. Mm -hmm. Do you offer a, a grocery list? Because I want to make things simple as possible. I just want to know what do I need to buy now from this point forward? Uh, a grocery list for your food or what do you Yeah, do? If based on what my tests come back, say, okay, here's the foods that you need to eat or these are the ones that make you the healthiest. This is the diet for you. Is there just a list that you kind of give us? Um, for Just in general with my clients, I kind of have an equation that I follow when I'm doing nutritional consulting with my clients. So I base it off of being um, – just very savvy with don't eating G you know no no GMOs in your diet because those are very inflammatory for your body. Um, I, I try to keep them away from a lot of gluten containing products, bread products, potatoes. Uh, when we're trying to lose weight, we really don't want to be eating the white stuff, the white sugar, the refined sugars, the flours, the breads, the pastas, you know, all of the normal things. But those are all the things we go through because sometimes the things that I think that everybody knows, I take for granted because not everybody knows those things. And so it does require a part on, on my part of nutritional counseling as well to help them weed through the, the, I call it the noise. There's just too much noise out there. So Dr. Lori, how can people find out more information on, the, on getting these tests done with you? Um, it's pretty simple, actually. Uh, they just need to contact me or send me an inquiry through my website, which is www.healyourselfbeautiful.com. And every email comes directly to me. So I personally will look at those emails and get back within 24 to 48 hours and then schedule a consultation or send out a kit. In fact, I, I posted something on Facebook just today and three people requested kits. And that's the beauty, too. You can be anywhere in the United States. 
and I can send a kit to you and then you send the kit to my lab and we can do a Skype or a phone consultation anywhere in the United States. Well, in addition to visiting HealYourselfBeautiful.com, if you have a question for Dr. Lori, use the hashtag AskDrLori on Facebook, Twitter, or on YouTube, and she'll get back to you. All right, Dr. Lori, thanks very much. Thank you, Dave.